Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for this video meditation that's accompanied by music. I'm Joan Gandy, the minister here at First Presbyterian Church. We are in the sanctuary of the church in Natchez, Mississippi. That was John Gates at the piano. John is our organist and director of music, and he will return for more music after a short um, Bible study. One of the things that I love about Jesus when I think about all of the wonderful things he can do, just walking into a space and just being there, he brings calm and peace often. Now, not always, because he could also stir up a crowd and turn things upside down as well. But I think that right now we long for what he can bring to us in the way of the peace that he offers if you remember just after Easter when he appears to the disciples and they are worried and afraid and they're locked in a room and he just walks right through the door and he says, peace be with you, my peace I give to you. Peace is something that we crave and especially in a time when we just don't know where to look for it, how to get it. This morning I'm turning to a text from Mark, the ninth chapter, and we'll read it in just a moment. Read verses 14 to 29 if you'd like to follow along. <clears throat> I think that um, it's interesting to note that when we start this reading, Jesus and several of the disciples are just coming down from a mountaintop where he's had the experience that is called the transfiguration. So he's been transformed and uh, made uh, holy and glorified uh, in the presence of these disciples. Uh, it's an interesting story to read if you're not familiar with it. But when they come down into uh, the valley, that is where we pick up the story. So let's read together Mark, the ninth chapter, verses 14 through 29. When they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe, and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, what are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. It has often cast him into the fire and into the water to destroy him, but if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you are able all things can be done for the one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, this kind can come out 
only through prayer. This is the word of the Lord for us today. So down in the valley, the disciples are trying to do what Jesus has taught them to do. He has led them now for a while and given them lessons and he has given them power and taught them how to cure certain things. Jesus, when he comes down into the valley, wants to hear from the people who seem to be the people in the midst of the real story going on here. He knows what's happening, but he wants everyone around to know what he knows. And so he begins to ask questions. There is a father and a small son, and the son is ill. The father has come to the place looking for Jesus, hearing that he's somewhere in the area. He thinks Jesus might be able to help his child. No one else has been able to. The child has never really known peace in all his life, and therefore neither has his family. If you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us, the father says to Jesus as they meet. And Jesus answers the Father, all things can be done for the one who believes. And then we hear this poignant prayer, a holy prayer, one of the best short prayers we're given in the Bible. When the Father cries out, he cries out, I believe, help my unbelief. The Father struggles he does want to believe that Jesus can help. But he's afraid that his faith is not strong enough. He wants to believe and he wants Jesus to help. Help me to believe, he cries, thinking that if his faith is not strong enough, here is another thing Jesus can do for him. Jesus can strengthen his faith. Jesus looked upon him and saw everything human about him that could be seen. He saw all of his need. He looked into the father's heart and saw the love that he felt for his child. Jesus knew that it was enough and that his faith would be enough as well. The story gives us Great comfort, I think, especially now in a time when we pray and pray, and I know many of you are praying frequently, hoping that something will happen to bring peace to this strange time in which we live. Peace that will take away the worry that we have in the midst of a pandemic. Peace that will take away the hurt that we're feeling, all of us, all over the world even, the hurt, the breaking point in a time when we see with more clarity than we ever have just how unjust people have been treated because of the color of their skin or because of their social standing in a place or because of their lifestyle, or because of their age. It goes on and on. But it is a turning point. In the middle of this pandemic, what a time for this to happen. But here we are, and it's happening all around us, and we're beginning to see the injustice coming through in the time when we see more people of color suffering in a time of pandemic. The ones who did not have the best health care available, the ones who did not have 
money to be able to eat nutritious food all of the time. The ones who lived crowded together because that's how they always have lived. I believe, help my unbelief, how many times I wonder, has that prayer been said? Jesus, yes, had taught the disciples how to cure, heal, how to do some of the things that he himself had done, but they couldn't accomplish the task on this day. They wanted to know why they were unsuccessful. Why could we not cast out this demon, they asked. And Jesus answers, this kind can come out only That has stumped me at times when I've thought about what that might mean. It seems to me that perhaps there was a jumping too soon to think that too soon they thought they had the answers. Here's what we can do. Oh, we'll make everything better. We know how to do this. And they jumped right in and began doing the things that they heard and saw and felt Jesus do as he taught them. But they forgot to pray, or maybe their prayer was not the right prayer. Maybe their prayer was not, thy will be done. If we all prayed that particular prayer together all over the world, what a day that would be. Now, Jesus, when he spoke to them about their inability to do what they tried to do, is not being mean to them in telling them that Perhaps their prayer didn't work. But he is sending a message about how they prayed. And he does tell us that prayer is a gift. It is not something we take for granted. Sometimes our prayers are sincerely, deeply felt and prayed. And yet we find that our prayers are not answered the way that we expected. Well, that doesn't mean that we didn't have enough faith. You know that if you are a prayer. But it means that perhaps there's something else that God has in mind. Thy will be done. Every Bible story has a lesson. This one has at least two I would like to mention. They're about faith and about prayer. Here's something to remember about faith. First, faith is a gift like prayer. It's a gift of mercy and grace given to us through Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, faith calls our hearts to gratitude to reach out to others in need. Faith has double portions. And remember this, prayer, if it is not already a part of your prayer life, prayer should include such prayers as the one we learn in this lesson. I believe, help my unbelief. I'm reminded of a truth to which I adhere. Certainty, not doubt, is the enemy of faith. 
how blessed we are to know that Jesus offers peace to the world. And Jesus has given us the power to bring that peace, not without him, but in his power, he offers peace to us in our hearts. So peace can begin as it spreads throughout the world. It can begin in each heart. I pray for our world and for all the people in it that the peace of Christ will rest upon each person and that hearts truly will be changed. We are at a special point in the life of God's people, of all people in the world. And those of us who are praying people, those of us who are scripture reading people, and those of us who believe can together make a difference in asking God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to let there be peace on earth now. Amen. God be with you in this day.